Hi, I'm David Kerr with CBTV News, and we're doing a special interview today with the president of Germana Community College, Dr. Janet Gullickson. Dr. Gullickson, welcome to CBTV News interview. Yes, I'm thrilled to be here. I appreciate that. Now, Dr. Gullickson uh, is not from uh, the Fredericksburg area originally. Uh, she actually uh, got her PhD in higher education at the University of Minnesota and worked for a while uh, with the Department of Higher Education uh, with the state of Colorado. And then uh, after that worked with the uh, Department of Colleges and Universities uh, for the state of Minnesota. And then following that worked for the Spokane uh, Community Colleges and came to us in the Fredericksburg area from Sp uh, Spokane Falls Community College where she was the president. So we're really glad you're here in the Fredericksburg area and it's a real treat to have you. And uh, you've been here uh, for a year and a half. Uh, I guess my first question is what's your impression of the area? and and what, how do you feel about it? How do you feel about your new assignment? Well, I love it here. My husband loves it here. It's been a very good uh, transition for us. Um, we really didn't know what to expect. We never lived in the southeastern part of the country. And it was quite a change. It's quite different from other regions of the country, but not negatively or positively. It's just an exciting new experience. It's. Uh, gracious and hospitable and we felt welcome from the beginning uh, plenty to see plenty to do in fact today I just got tickets for a fried oyster fest um, oh you're really in the south now <laughs> yeah, really, yeah, no, really. uh, next Saturday and that's going to be our anniversary treat so hopefully they have good cornbread but uh, cornbread is essential love <laughs> we love it here yeah if you developed a taste for barbecue Yes, we have, very much so. I'm a fan of barbecue pork, but I'm convincing my husband that's best. He's kind of a barbecue chicken guy, and I just think, I, I, might as well use ketchup if it's chicken. <laughs> um, well, uh, I wonder what I wanted to ask was, uh, what brought you here? Because you know, Spokane's a long ways away from Fredericksburg. I had a great job in Spokane. It was a good place to live, and I had planned to be there until I retired. We, though, and our family had quite a shocking medical emergency with oh. my daughter, twice actually, and uh, eventually another time with another child as she was in childbirth. And so you wake up one day, David, and you say, hmm, I could live 2,000 some miles away and a day of travel and in an emergency be there, but uh, could I possibly live a couple hours away and make it work? Now, this is the weird path. <laughs> this, it just gets weirder. So we came out to see my daughter, and we said, let's, let's go to Fredericksburg. It's on a lot of the best places to live lists, and just want to see it. So we drove down here and looked around, drove home. And then within a couple weeks, the Germana Community College presidency brochure appeared uh, online for me to see. Now, I wasn't looking for a job. I wasn't even looking at Germana. It just happened. <laughs> and there were about a, thou a thousand different reasons not to do it, but I had one grandchild that made all the reason to do it. So my husband works for Grand Coulee Dam, which is the largest dam in North America, uh, from our basement. <laughs> He runs the dam, and he always says, well, water just goes downhill, so it's not that hard to run a dam. But uh, Of course. It's that easy. Yeah, yeah, it's that easy. Child could do it. <laughs> <laughs> and so we, um, he telecommutes, and uh, there were 100 people who applied for this job, and I was just so very fortunate to work here and get this job. From everything I've heard, we're the ones who were fortunate. Well, that's very gracious of you. One, well, um, I, I know that... Uh, uh, University system like this that's spread out isn't unusual in the country, but still, you're, you're covering an area that's at least three counties. Uh, I was uh, looking up, uh, looking on the website, and we've got our, 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 our campus at Stafford, right here at Spotsville. We're in actually Fredericksburg here. You have another location, Fredericksburg, uh, Locust Grove, uh, another one in Caroline. That's a pretty spread out yes. operation. We serve uh, more than three counties and the lo locality of Fredericksburg. Well, that's right. You get you taking Louisa, Culp uh, and um, Culpeper, Culpeper, Stafford, uh, Spotsylvania, Caroline, King George, and Orange and Madison. So it's a big. That's a bigger spectrum yes, than I realized. It is. It is. Uh, well, here's the good news. 
I came to Fredericksburg and everybody was wonderful and I love the history. Then I started going, driving to Culpeper. This was for my interview. And I saw cattle and horses <laughs> and farms. And I thought, I know, I know how to do this. I was raised on a farm. And the access to higher education in rural areas is a very big deal. And I understand it. And that's something I can bring to this position. I used to work a lot in northern rural Minnesota. Um, and that was, that's when I really understood the need to have education, higher education available. And because of the efficient way that Germana has done business and continues to do business, we can do that fairly reasonably and still meet the needs for a really broad service area. So you, if you feel that, uh, from, I, I know you roam around a lot of course, but uh, you feel that this is something you can manage from one, one central location? And... Uh, I calculated that within the last year, every month I drove 40 hours. So I, I drove a week. <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> but but I love it. I love driving it. I, um, I'm just in love with the area and in love with Germana and in love with the students and the supporters that it has in the counties and the communities. So. I think you're right about that, certainly. Uh, yeah. Now, I, I'm going to ask you about some of the challenges. I, I thought I might put that off for just a second. Okay. And ask you a little, well, not necessarily more positive, but something that starts out with your vision. You've been here long enough to take in a lot of data, kind of see where you, where it is, where it's going, the level of support. What is your vision? Well, I think uh, your question could be more timely coming on the heels of the previous question. Um, in difficult times financially, and we could talk about that more in a bit. The tendency is to hunker down, to maybe cancel some classes, to not offer as many services, and to maybe drive some of the services off our rural locations because we don't have as many people there. If you look at it just from a cost uh, and efficiency point of view, it's not terribly efficient sometimes to offer courses in some of the areas that we do. On the other hand, I know personally and professionally how important access is in rural areas. So we took a little different approach and thanks to our wonderful marketing department as well as others at the college, we were able to open up more space and fill it this year using um, a lot of prayer, <laughs> uh, but using some creative conversations across the college and working with our community. So for example, Germana is the only one of three community colleges in the state of Virginia up in enrollment this year, and we're up uh, more than any other college. And it's really because we have this magnificent team of student services workers, and our high schools are supporting us, and other people, our faculty, are willing to go to the Culpeppers of the world and teach and, and really love it. And so we've been able to grow enrollment, which is not common in these days. No, it hasn't been. Uh, and I guess at least, you probably already answered this one, but the uh, community colleges have taken, it, in Virginia, have kind of taken it on the chin for just about every year since the Great Recession, and it's only now slightly recovering. Well, do you, do you, all right, is that, is it, do, you, do you think that the situation is going to at least stabilize or perhaps even get better? Well, Virginia has a, a unique set of problems in that they have, we have very rural areas in our state that have lost their economic base. Mm -hmm. And those colleges are truly challenged because what do they train and educate people for, particularly if they train and educate people to leave? where the jobs go where the jobs are. So that's a really dire situation. And then you have places like the Hampton Roads area, uh, I-95 corridor, mm -hmm. the monster of Northern Virginia, and, yeah, that's right, which up. is coming this way, <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Um, and so we should be growing. And frankly, we must grow in order to keep the access to those rural areas that's so important. So we have to be, we have to grow. Mm -hmm. And frankly, given our population, getting, given the fact of Stafford and what's happening in the Stafford region, given what's happened really if Amazon comes to Northern Virginia, uh, if Germana doesn't grow, there's something wrong. We have to grow. And 
if you would ask my staff, they kind of hear me say that a lot. <laughs> Is that one, one direction put forward? Yes. Well, I mean, there, there's, a, there, there's a point you made there about the changing nature of the education you're offering. Uh, Germana is well known for having a very good vocational, mm -hmm. uh, pro very good vocational programs. Uh, and I gather you're growing that or plan to grow it. In targeted areas, and um, actually about 70% of our graduates are transfer students, which uh, surprises a lot of people. Yeah, it, it does. We, there are a couple areas where we really want to grow. One is the health area, and we would grow not just in our Locust Grove area, which is getting a brand new building, hopefully up in three years, devoted to health technology education, but also in the Stafford region because Stafford's medical care needs are growing and we really want to target uh, the whole range of occupations in allied health. Um, the second thing that we, I think, are well situated to target is kind of a combination, but business. We mm -hmm. have a lot of needs for business in our region and that's a good tr degree to transfer. Uh, but we also want to really focus on cybersecurity. And so we're working with the, some of the big providers in the region to turn out qualified, highly qualified, highly uh, demanded cybersecurity graduates. We actually are going after right now a national certification in cybersecurity for Germana Community College so that we are recognized our students, our graduates, are recognized as a certain special category. So we're excited. It's interesting you mentioned cybersecurity. That's a very popular program among re returning veterans. Mm -hmm. uh, they are often very computer savvy, uh, looking for something to kind of continue the national defense role, particularly wounded veterans. Is there a do, do you have a, an outreach to uh, veterans at the, at the community college? We do. We actually have an award-winning veterans center, which is sort of below us where we have <laughs> in the in the building and we have uh, people set aside people dedicated uh, veterans themselves to helping veterans students not just uh, get into school but stay in school with some of the personal issues as well as the massive amount of paperwork that the VA requires to get someone through so they can get their benefits and we serve hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of veteran students every year now I have a tip for mm -hmm. veterans. Uh, they don't always think of this. Oh, listen up, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Many veterans come out with a security clearance. That's right. And Just by being in the service, you have a certain security clearance. The biggest obstacle for anybody graduating from a cybersecurity program, be it ours or at universities, is the lag time in getting their security clearance. Now, you can keep your clearance for, I think, about five years. I'm not an expert on yeah, clearance. It, it, it can depend. Sometimes three, sometimes five. Right. Um, so if you're interested in working in cybersecurity, you will be swelled up like that if you go through a degree program and still have your clearance. Not only that, but you're employable in various internships in the field. So you military folks who are coming out with clearance, look at cybersecurity. We'd love to have you. <laughs> That's terrific. And now that leads me up to an, uh, 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 there's a good lead into that. Uh, I was reading about your internship program. Now, back when I was in college, there was no such thing as internship programs, mm -hmm. and you couldn't really come up with a term. You think of interns, you thought of doctors at a hospital. Yeah. Um, I gather uh, community college here runs a fairly extensive internship program but with a few places I, I was a little surprised to see, like uh, radio station, local government, uh, several businesses. NASA. NASA. Yes, we've had interns. I visit, I visit, I, 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 that's pretty awesome. Yes. Um, we have. They're sponsored, aren't they? I mean, you, you, you have a sponsor, you're, well, it's overseen. Uh, yes, generally. And we don't like students to have unpaid internships. I will tell you that. And the reason for that is that many of our students are poor. Mm -hmm. And if there isn't a payment associated with that job, at least equal to McDonald's, they can't leave that McDonald's job because they need the money to live. And so we really like our interns to be paid. I really like to hear that. Uh, it, I'm, I've known some students who have been unable to go on an internship because they just needed the money to live, live and to yeah. get enough money together for the fall. 
but we have three crackerjack people in our career transfer center, one of whom is totally devoted to developing internships for students. We know that employers want students to, and graduates who know how to work. And many students now, because of labor force competition and the competition on their time, don't really have jobs like we used to. You probably had a job at mm -hmm. some point growing up. I had a job growing up. Nowadays, it's much harder for students to have that paid experience that's worth something. We get a lot of complaints from employers that they don't know how to work, or graduates don't know how to work, kids nowadays don't. Millennials, well, millennials are actually fabulous cool. workers, but you have to inspire them and treat them fairly. So, what we want to do is to give almost every student we can work experience, either through an internship, a clinical, all of our health occupations, uh, students have clinical experiences, we have practicums. We are very much focused on learning that occurs not just in the classroom or the laboratory, but in the workplace too. I think that's terrific, mm -hmm. and uh, that is a wonderful add-on to a college education, just get to be very good at propelling them into the workforce. Mm -hmm. And often gets them jobs later. Yes, I imagine it does. Um, in one of your prior assignments, you worked on developing a uh, program for at-risk high school students. Mm -hmm. uh, something I served on the school board years ago, yeah. and it's something I was very familiar with. It's a, one of those kids who worked quite in, worked quite out, and if we didn't get, that was going to be, what was it going to work out well? Uh, I thought that was very intriguing. Is, have you thought about that for Germana? We do have some programs now that were in place before our I came and are really working to expand them. Honestly, there's a huge demand for using college courses uh, while students are in high school to give them a little boost, to tell them, you can do this, you can do this. But the important thing, David, is the wraparound services. You can't just pluck a student who's never thought about going mm -hmm. to college, whose parents aren't really that engaged in that process, not because they don't want to be, but because they don't know how. You can't just pluck them into a college course and say, good luck, let's hope you swim. So the wraparound services are so important. The people who check on them, the people who call them if they don't come to work, the people who talk to them when they break up with their boyfriends, the people who, because they are still adolescents and adolescents have problems that sometimes seem so large to them. The other thing we know is that many people don't believe their college material. And that message has been told to them for years. Maybe they have a disability. Maybe they're a person of color. Maybe they had uh, problems with math in third grade. Um, and so they immediately, well, not immediately, but over time, they develop a sense of themselves that they aren't ready for college. Honestly, sometimes those folks, especially if they've worked a couple of years before they come here, are the best students. Because sometimes the mind just takes a while to develop. Sometimes you might not have been successful in, when you are a senior in high school or even your first time at college. But it's amazing what a few years will, and a few bills to pay will, <laughs> will it do. It does focus the mind, it doesn't does it? It does focus the mind. And so many of our students are coming back who are older than uh, high school students too. It's a, a tough time to be a high schooler in our country. I, I think you're right. Yeah. Um, I don't want to keep you too long today, but there's one. Uh, Something I've noticed in, in the business of education is that the traditional teacher in front of the classroom, giving a lecture, taking notes, isn't really the way education is being delivered in most places now. We, we're, we're kind of at the very you know, keeping people who teach employed. It's nice to do the presentation, but very much it's supplemented by the net, by uh, off-site learning. How is uh, Germanic getting a hold of that? Well, Germana has always been, uh, in part because of the earthquake that occurred here, has always been on the forefront of distance education. Uh, Dr. Sam, my predecessor, managed that disaster quite well, and one of the solutions when the building started crumble, crumbling was to offer online education. 
And so Germana has worked very hard to build a lot of capacity in online education. We have the tools that you and I wouldn't believe, tools that capture a lecture, tools that you can embed videos from Khan Academy or from YouTube to help students learn. We have shared sites where students can work together. And one might be in New Jersey and one might be in Culpeper. We have a lot of tools that allow students to go to school without coming to Germana property at all. And we're thrilled about that. There's more and more demand in that. One of the things that Germana has, one of the many things it has that it does very well is our tutoring center. And our tutoring center has really adapted, it's called ACE, it's really adapted to the way people learn now. And that's just in time. So they have 24-7 tutoring services that you can get uh, through a, a, even a exchange, a video exchange, as well as a, a online exchange. We offer 24-7 financial aid services. We offer 24-7 how do I pay my bill services. We offer 24-7 I need to register for class now. How do I do that services? So we've tried to adapt to the schedule that we're on right now in this world, which is never ending. It's do, you, pretty do, you, amazing. do you ever feel like you're, and I think this is perfectly reasonable, you're competing with the four year, traditional four year colleges in the sense you're being more flexible, being more dynamic, offering very good quality courses, at least for the first two years? But so many students who come to Germana, many, many of them want to go on to four year institutions. Well, what we hear from uh, families and from people who really manage their own finances is. Uh, you pay about $5,000 a year to come to Germana uh, to get a full years of tuition. So it would cost you about $10,000. That's less than one year at a state university in Virginia would cost. And that's a low cost university. A very low cost. <laughs> very low cost. And so what I often tell parents and others is save money on the first two years. Your student is going to more than eat that up if they transfer. And also, if they decide to go on for graduate degrees, they will need help at that point. So at that point, worry about student loans and things like that. Save now. So do I think we are competing with um, universities? Yes, we are. But that doesn't scare me. <laughs> we have small class sizes. We have reasonable costs. We have faculty who graduated from uh, some of the best universities in the world. We have. Uh, people standing by to help you. Uh, people love people here. They're greeting everybody. They get, they'll help you. They'll bend over backwards. Uh, we have emergency funds if you run out of gas money. We have all the supports that you need. Our biggest challenge, if you would, is to get those students who come to stay. Mm -hmm. And that's where contributions from donations from other foundations, to our foundation, from private individuals to our foundation, can make a big difference. Let me give you an example. The uh, Commonwealth, correctly, requires that by a certain date, students must have their tuition bills paid. Very reasonable. They should. Mm -hmm. uh, but often, students don't have the money to pay those bills, even after financial aid is, is applied. So a student might lose their entire semester's worth of credit over as little as $300 that they might owe, $200. What you might spend going out for a nice dinner. Um, so we actually have a campaign going on now called It Doesn't Take Much, which is about people giving as, as little as they can, they can and really piling it up to keep students in school. And that's a really big deal. Uh, we've dropped this year with it doesn't take much, uh, dropped the number of students we dropped by over 30%. Just through small so donations. Small donations don't have so much impact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doesn't happen too often. No, it doesn't. And you can see it. You can say, Jan Gullickson stayed in school because I forego I forgo one nice meal out. Jan stays in school. So it's it's really exciting. The other thing is we have to have a lot of support services for our students. Many of our students have uh, unimaginable pasts and we need to help get them through uh, so that they don't recreate those pasts for their own future. 
And so we have a lot of uh, counselors, we have uh, coaches, we have people, veterans affairs folks, uh, who help our students get through the rough spots of life. Our students are often homeless, we have a food shelf, uh, we have clothing, we have a shower downstairs that our students can use. Um, it's shocking how determined some people are to get this education in spite of things which would have probably left me and me. Yeah, on the road. Well, it's an incredible institution. You have such a diversity of activities. You provide so many services. You also do have an excellent academic calendar uh, and course offerings. Uh, that's commented on many times in several publications I've read. Uh, so somebody wants, and this is kind of the way I want to close our interview, and that is to say, so I, somebody wants to go to school here, or they want their ch uh, child to go, or they think, I have a cousin who might really benefit from learning a little more about Germanic Community College. What's the best way? We have 24-7 support for them. Go to www.germana.edu, G-E-R-M-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. dot edu, and click on a button, make a call. However, we will get back to you immediately. And can people drop by? Absolutely. This building right here, Locust Grove, Culpeper, any of our locations, they can drop in and we will help them. And they could call me. Email me and I'll get them. I've never been to an institution ever where the president of the university said, call me. Okay. Actually, in most of them, I never met the president <laughs> of the university. <laughs> so seriously, uh, if they email me at J-G-U-L-L-I-C-K-S-O-N, it's Norwegian, jgullickson at germana.edu, I'll hook them up. Well, there you go. You can't ask for a more explicit offer of contact me. I'll help you. I uh, want to thank you very much, thank Dr. Gellerson, for being with us on CVTV interview series. We've had a really good time, very enlightening, uh, quite a bit of fun. I enjoyed this interview a great deal. And we uh, hope you'll, uh, if you're interested in uh, Germanic Community College, you know somebody who is, or if you'd like to help the college uh, through the Just in Time donation, which is a very good idea, uh, do it. And we thank you very much for being with us tonight.